Hi guys, it's Juice here. I am here to do a long video today. So strap in, get some snacks, get some drinks. We are going to talk. Um, back in, when was it? Earlier in the summertime, I think, or like mid fall, I did a video of wrapping up all the books I've read of 2019 so far. And so this is going to be part two of that video. So in that video, I ended up with the, the last books I talked about was the month of July. And so these are the rest of the books that I read in July. So I'm going to just fly through these. The last book I talked about in that video was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicole Yoon. This one I read for the reading rush. I gave this one a three out of five right? Yeah, three out of five. And then the next two books I don't have because they were arcs that I had from NetGalley. And that is The Tea Dragon Festival by Katie O'Neill. I gave that a five out of five. I also read Mooncakes by Suzanne Young. Probably wrong, but Mooncakes, graphic novel, five out of five stars. And then after that, I read... Daughter of the Siren Queen by Teresa Levenseller, the second and final book in this duology. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Then I read Molly's Story by W. Bruce Cameron. This is part of the uh, like middle grade series that w that Cameron has. Um, I really enjoyed this. I gave this one a four out of five. Then I read. Teen Titans Raven graphic novel by Kimmy Garcia and I really really enjoyed this. This was such a quick easy read and I give this a 4 out of 5 as well. And also if I'm looking down a lot it's because I have my notebook right here um, to help me read off all the ratings. Um, and then the last second to last book in July I read was Like a Love Story by Abby Nazimin. Yes, I finally read this. Spoiler alert, this is a five-star read for me. Um, this is on my five-star prediction TBR, so I'll be making a wrap-up of that very soon. And then the last book I read I don't own, but I borrowed from the library was Other Words for Home by Jasmine Werga. I gave that one a five out of five. And now flipping to... In August, I read Sal and Gabby Breaks the Universe by Carlos Hernandez. Gave that a 4 out of 5. That's a library book I don't have. I buddy read, my first buddy read I did with Heather was Don't Date Rosa Santos. Gave that a 4 out of 5, which was another library book. Then I read To Make Monsters Out of Girls by Amanda Lovelace. Gave that a 3 out of 5. Then I read, I have the stack backwards, sorry. Then after that, I read The Steel Prince, Volume 1 by V.E. Schwab. I read this over the summer, and I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Then I read Maybe This Time by Casey West. Um, this is one of my favorite authors, but I sadly didn't really enjoy this one, so I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Uh, then I marathoned the whole... Modern Fairy Tale Trilogy by Holly Black. In August, I read all three of these, which is Tithe, Valiant, and Ironside. All of these was about three to four star rating. Uh, not my favorite series by Holly Black, but I'm keeping this edition because my friend Taylor bought this for me as a birthday gift. Then I read Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. Gave this one a five out of five. Such a cute graphic novel. Uh, then after that, I read Renegades by Marissa Meyer, the first book in the Renegades trilogy. Buddy read that with my friend Heather, gave that a 5 out of 5. Then I read To Drink Coffee with a Ghost, which was an arc that I had. Um, that's by Amanda Lovelace, the second and final book in that series. Then I read All for One by Melissa De La Cruz. I gave that one a 4 stars. Uh, I read Escaping from Houdini, finally, and I gave that one a four stars. And then I have Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan, or Dukin, however you say it. Um, pretty edition from Owl Crate. I gave this one a four out of five. Then I read 
Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alex Oseman. This is the second installment in the series. Volume 3 is coming out in February. So hopefully to get my hands on Volume 3. This is a 5 out of 5. Then I read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. My first thriller of the year. And I gave this one a 5 out of 5. And then I read another Owl Creek novel. And that was House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. Give this one a four out of five stars. And then going on to September, which is this big guy right here. In September, I can't even lift up the stack because of how heavy it is. In September, I read Crown of Feathers by Nikki Peru Peruta. Gave this one a three out of five. Then I read reread The Hidden Oracle, book one of the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Ryden. Gave this one a four out of five. This was a reread for me. Another reread I did was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I gave this one a four out of five. Then I read the Artemis Fowl graphic novel volume one. Gave that a four out of five. Then I read a new release, and that is The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. This is a 4 out of 5. Then I read The Truth About Magic by Atticus. His newest poetry collection gave that a 3 out of 5. Then I read The Last Olympian by Rick Ryan, the graphic novel version of it, and it gave that a 5 out of 5. Then I finally read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, another book that was on my five-star prediction TBR, and it gives one a four out of five stars. Um, next book I read was Fence, Volume 3, gave that a four out of five. Then I read, reread Legend by Marie Liu for the Legend read-along that Janie from This Story Ain't Over was hosting. I reread this, gave this one a four out of five. Then I read No Ivy League. I forgot who that was by, but that was the graphic novel that I picked up and gave that a 3 out of 5. Then I read another graphic novel, and that is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell. This is a 4 out of 5. Then I read Five Dark Fates by Kendra Blake, the fifth and the fourth installment in the series, and I give this one a 5 out of 5. Then we have The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This was part of the fairy a -thon and I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Then we went into contemporary a -thon, and that is Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This is a, a 4 out of 5 and a great debut novel. Then I read Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Marika Tamaki. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Then I buddy read this next book with my friend Heather, and that is Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman, part of my five-star prediction TBR, and yes, this was a five-star read. Then we have Stay Sweet by Siobhan Vivian. It gave this a two out of five, definitely my least favorite book of the year. And then the last book in, uh, in September I read was Autobiography by Christina Lauren. I give this a 5 out of 5. My second Christina Lauren book I read and I can't wait to read more from. Sorry about that. I was getting a phone call while I was filming. Uh, since we wrapped up September now, I'm going to show you all the books I read in October. Starting off with The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. This is the beautiful edition that I got at Barnes & Noble. Super, and I was super excited to read it. And I really enjoyed this. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. And a spoiler alert, it was on my 5 star wrap up. Or it's going to be on my 5 star prediction wrap up very, very soon. I'll be making that either this week or next week. Is when I'm going to be recording for that. Then after that, I read Artemis Fowl. The Arctic Volume 2, the graphic novel to that, I gave that one a 3 out of 5. Then my friend Heather hasn't read this next book, so I decided to reread this with her. And that is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This is a first book in a series. I really love this one. This is my favorite book ever, so I reread it two, three times, two times already. One last year with my friend Taylor. 
or one in 2018 with my friend Taylor and one in 2019 with my friend Heather. So really enjoyed this. Gave this a five out of five. Then I read Imposters by Scott Westerfield, another buddy read I did with my friend Heather. Gave this a four out of five. Then I read Paper Girls Volume 6. That was a graphic novel, the sixth installment in that series. And I gave that one a 5 out of 5. Then I read Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the fourth installment of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I give this one a 4.5, maybe a 5 star now. I give this one a 5 out of 5. And I really love this series. <clears throat> Next book I read was Wayward Son by Rainbow Gal, the sequel to Carry On, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Next is a buddy read I did with my friend Kate, and that is Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. This is the sequel to City of Ghosts. This came out in September, and I just read it in October for Spookathon. I also read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Rare, my second thriller adult thriller novel of the year I gave this one a four four or five four out of five stars and um this was my first Ruth Graham book and I really really enjoyed it it really like blew me away and this is one author that I want to read her backlist books so then we have the Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This was one of the Owl Creek books I got in in September, and it came perfectly in time because I wanted to read this for a spookathon, and I did, and I give this one a four out of five. And then next, I read Steel Prince Volume Two, uh, which is called Night of Knives, which is hard to say. Um, this is by V. E. Schwab, adapted by all these lovely artists uh can't wait for volume three i think it comes out in march or february i don't know exactly but definitely excited for that then i reread daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins reads i gave this one a four out of five and then after that i read stargazing by jen wang that was a graphic novel that i borrowed from my public library really enjoyed that i gave that one a three out of five then I reread The Cool Prince by Holly Black for the Fairyathon. I continue on with the Fairyathon, um, and I really enjoyed this as a reread. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. And then the last two books are library books, so I don't really owe them, and that is The William Shakespeare of A New Hope and Empire Strike Back by Ian Dozier, I think is who it's by. Um, I love both of them. They were both 5-star reads. And then in November, which is kind of a smaller month, I say that right now, um, the first book in November I read was His Hideous Heart by, edited by Delilah Alder. I really enjoyed this. I buddy read this with my friend Brittany and a whole bunch of other people on Instagram. I gave hit this one a 3 out of 5. I don't know if I said the rating for that or not. Then the next book I read was a library book, and that was American Royals by Catherine McGee. I gave that one a 4 out of 5. That was a new release that came uh, out in September, and I read it in November, so gave that one a 4 out of 5. And then I read, I continue on with my legend read-along that was happening, so I reread re Prodigy and Champion, both by Marie Lou, obviously. Both of these were four. I gave both of these a four-star read. Um, they were really good. I love rereading these. And then I read I'm Not Dying With You Tonight by Kimberly Jones and Julie Siegel. Gilly Siegel. Sorry. Um, this one I really enjoy. It's such a great debut novel. And I give this one a four out of five. And I actually read this book in like literally one day. So that never happens before. Um, next book is Rebel by Marie Lu. This is the fourth installment in the series. I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a five star. Then I read Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. Uh, that was a library book that I read for Fantasy of Thon. Uh, gave that one a four out of five. Then I read Ten Blank Dates by Ashley Elston. Gave that a four out of five. 
Then I read Batman Nightwalker, a graphic novel version by Marie Lu, adapted by someone, I forgot who it was, but it was a graphic novel version of her book. Then I read Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy. I gave that one a three out of five. Then I listened to The Lost Sister by Holly Black, part of the fairy thon edition. Um, I listened to The Lost Sister and I gave that one a three out of five as well. And then I read Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi, my first book by this author, and I really, really enjoyed it. I was super surprised by it. I listened to this as an audio and I gave this one a four out of five and I would definitely be checking out Emergency Contact. Then I have Slave by Brittany Morrison. I gave that one a four out of five. And then the last book I read in November was the last book for November because I remember reading this one and that is The Warrior Heir by Sunder William Chima, the first book in this edition, in this series. Um, and I give this one a four out of five. And then going into December, I only read nine books because I was sick a lot in December and I was also busy with the holidays and such. So the first book in December I read was A Dog's Promise by W. Bruce Cameron. I gave this one a five out of five. Then I buddy read this book, this next book with my friend Mandy, and that is The Grace Year by Kim Legit. Uh, gave this one a four out of five. Then I read Shattered City by Scott Westerfield, the second book in the Imposter series. I gave that one a four out of five. I buddy read that with my friend Heather. Then I read Sea Witch and also Sea Witch Rising, which I don't own, but I read book one and two of this series. And according to Sarah, this series is complete because she doesn't have any plans to write a third book. So I completed this series in 2019 and I gave both of them, I gave Sea Witch a three and a half out of five stars and then I gave Sea Witch Rising a four stars. So it's not my favorite series I read, but definitely one to enjoy. And then the next book I read was The Wizard Heir by Cinder William Chima. This is the sequel to The Warrior Heir, which I just mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, I really wasn't a fan of this one just because it was just like a lot of like politics in this one. So I gave this one a three and a half out of five stars. Then after that, I read Queen's Shadows by E.K. Johnson. This is a Star Wars novel. I gave this one a five out of five. I love these Star Wars audiobooks they do. It's really amazing. Um, and I can't wait for Crane's Pearl, I think is what the second one of this is called. So, yeah, gave this one a 5 out of 5. And then the second to last book that I read in 2019 was Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. I got this beautiful edition from Owl Crate, and I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. It took me a little while to read this one because I read this one physically because it wasn't an audiobook for this one at the time, but I was just like... Let me just read it physically and I did and it took me a long time to read it but I overall I really enjoyed it and I love Nora and I gave this one a four out of five stars. And the last book that I read in 2019 and the last book I read of the decade was The Trials of Apollo book two The Dark Prophecy by Rick Ryden and the second installment in this series and the second installment in my reread of the series. Um, I wanna, I've been wanting to reread this series in anticipation for book four, which I have up here on my TBR show. Um, I really enjoyed this. I will give more in-depth thoughts in my actual December wrap-up, which I'll be filming today. So really happy I ended the year with this, and I can't wait to pick up the Burning Maze next. So yeah, those are the rest of the books that I read in 2019, and I'll talk to you guys later. Let me know if you're reading these down below, and I'll chat with you guys in the comments. Bye!